Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, my name is Tamika. We're in a bit of a different location today because I just want to do a chill q and A. I I hope this sounds okay. I am in like my living dining area and we have quite high ceilings. The sound travels a lot. So I asked on my community tab and over on Instagram, if you aren't following me, go check it out. Um, if you had any questions, that bird's going to do this the whole time, isn't it? So thank you to everyone for asking me questions. Let's get into it, starting with some makeup ones. So I've got from Katarina, what are the best drugstore makeup products from Priceline or Chemist Warehouse in 2022? So far, I have been loving the Rimmel Kind and Free range. The Skin Tint is a beautiful formula, and I tried the mascara for the first time today, and oh, I was impressed. Not all of ELF's products are available at Priceline, but you can get them from Kmart. And this year, I loved the release of the Putty Bronzer. Oh my god, that product is beautiful. The formula is great, it blends really easily, and the shade is really nice for fair skin as well. I picked up tan lines, and it works just perfectly. I am also loving the Double Trouble Mascara from Essence 2. A question from Ree, she says, what are your favorite skincare products or brands from Priceline Chemist Warehouse and which drugstore brands do you think have the best shade ranges for fair skin? For skincare at Priceline, you can't pass up the ordinary. They are super affordable and have such a big range. I know a lot of their products look really confusing by the titles, but if you go online, you can find like charts and it simplifies it for you because when I first looked at the range I was like what on earth <laughs> do all of these products mean like what do the names mean but I currently use a salicylic acid a lactic acid and a hyaluronic acid from the ordinary I have previously used a niacinamide as well I didn't really like their vitamin C but they just have a really good range and it's really affordable great active ingredients Shopping for skincare products though, I wouldn't just go in and stick to one brand. I like to have a little browse, see what each brand is offering. Vitamin C's for example, I have tried a few different ones from Priceline and my favorite is by Skin Physics. It's a very thin formula, it doesn't clog my pores. Some of my favorite products are from brands like Neutrogena, Sukin, Q&A, have a really nice range. And I love the Cancer Council facial SPF. And then the second half of that question, which drugstore brands do you think have the best shade ranges for fair skin? I think that L'Oreal and Maybelline. Now, neither of these brands are cruelty free if you are cruelty free, which is a bummer, but the L'Oreal True Match has about 40 shades and the Maybelline Fit Me also has around 40, I'm pretty sure. Back to L'Oreal, even with their True Match powders and the Infallible Concealer, they have quite a big range. So it's nice to know that you can go in store and have that variety right in front of you. You don't just have to look at it online. Cold Case Edits asked, what's your go-to Aussie cosmetic brand? So I'm assuming you mean like Australian made and I have to go with Australis. They just, I love them. The Fresh and Flawless Foundation, amazing. The powder, amazing. Their eyeshadow palettes are the best drugstore eyeshadow palettes I've ever tried. The formula is so creamy, so smooth. The shimmers are beautiful. They just have so many great products and they don't release too much that you can't keep up. It's just nice releases here and there. It gets you excited. I think it's such a great brand. Tenya asks, what brands are not yet available in Mecca or Priceline that you are hoping will make it to the Aussie market? Let me have a quick look on Trend Mood because I don't really follow like brands that aren't available here that much. If you have any brands that you would love to see available here in Australia, let me know. Oh, actually, Colourpop. If that could be in a store in Australia, that would be the best because it's affordable and they have a really big range. And like a lot of the things I've tried from them, I really enjoy. Yeah, I'm really not sure, hey. What I would like is if we just got the products at the same time, not have to wait months. Maddie Jane asks, best stick blush, please. I'm trying to move to all cream situations. 
love that for you. Not necessarily a stick, but if we're talking cream blushes, I love the Fenty Cream Blush. And I know that is more in the high-end price range, but it is so long lasting and it has a matte finish. A lot of cream blushes I'm finding are very dewy and glowy. And although I love that, it's nice to have a matte option. So I think that's a really good staple to have in your collection. I haven't yet tried, but I always hear people rave about the Rare Beauty blushes. So I definitely wanna get on that train because they have a really good shade range as well. If you're looking for something more affordable though, I would definitely go the Flower Beauty blush bombs. We don't have the whole shade range here, which is kind of annoying, but a really beautiful formula and something a bit more dewy, the Emco Beauty cheek and lip tints are beautiful. Samantha asks, why did you start a YouTube channel? And I think this is a great question. Back in the day, so like I've had my YouTube channel since I reckon 2015. It's been a long, a long time, but I started because I was starting to get into makeup and at that time, there was only really Taylor Wynn and Anna Elaine that were doing a beauty YouTube videos, like dedicated for fair skin. So when they would upload a video with new makeup recommendations, it was just like, this is so good because it was really hard to find products suitable for fair skin. So that kind of inspired me to get into it. I wanted to share the products that I found and that I thought worked. I was really starting to get into the makeup world. In that day, I feel like the beauty community was very different. If you were here then, you would know. <laughs> but it was just a really fun space. It still is, it's definitely changed, but it's still a fun space. And yeah, back then I just wanted to share what I knew and I'm kind of just still doing the same thing. Like I'm not an expert by any means. I just love trying new makeup, love it sharing tips for fair skin and want people to embrace their fair skin as well because that's something that throughout my whole life people have said to me like oh my god you're so fair or why don't you tan or you know they just have a comment about my skin and it's like what like i can't enjoy my fair skin and i hate that that's a feeling that so many people are familiar with and i just want people to feel comfortable in their fair skin because it's beautiful McClellan Mena says, I'm just starting my YouTube channel. What's some advice you would give yourself if you were starting again? Oh my God. Um, it's a lot of work. <laughs> so just be prepared for that. I think my advice would be lower my expectations. And by that, I mean like how much you can do. Because this whole time I've had my YouTube channel, I've always worked full time and I've had these expectations on myself that I can pump out content like a full-time creator does, you know, two to three videos a week, Instagram posts every day, um, and now it's reels and TikToks, and it's just, it's not possible for me anyway, when you're trying to, you know, still live your life, you've got relationships, like trying to be social, trying to just relax, <laughs> you know, life. <laughs> so I would just say start out with low expectations, so that you don't disappoint yourself either. You know, one video a week, two Instagram posts a week. Even like now, I struggle to keep up with that. <laughs> it's such a fun and creative outlet and I really enjoyed that aspect of it. So I think when you are starting a channel, just really focus on that instead of trying to pump out all this content because I feel like the expectations are so high to do that and sometimes it's just not possible. <laughs> Sneeze Skywalker says, what was the biggest challenge for you starting YouTube? Well, first of all, I was trying to hide it from people around me because I didn't want them to know. <laughs> so that was a bit challenging. One of my girlfriends actually found my makeup Instagram and uh, yeah, busted me. <laughs> but I think a challenging part for me is the technology. Technology is not my strong point. Trying to figure out a camera, oh! Everything is on auto mode. I even, like, I don't even have a microphone because I tried to do one once and I couldn't get the audio, like it was really quiet and I just gave up. So I don't even use a microphone. So if anyone can help me, please. But I watched all these videos on YouTube and I just couldn't figure it out. I'm just not technology savvy and I don't have the patience for it either. If it doesn't work, I'm like, forget it. I've had enough, get it out of my sight. So technology was definitely a big challenge when I started YouTube and it kind of still is to this day. I've got my basic settings and I leave it at that. Amber asks, if you didn't have a beauty channel, what type of videos would you make? 
I feel like I would probably make organizational videos because I am a ho for some organizational content. Oh my God. When things are just like neatly in their clear containers, all just looking good. Oh my, I, I love it. I just love it. And I like to do that kind of stuff around my home as well. So I would probably make content to do with that and just like organizing your life. Not that like I'm some <laughs> perfectly organized person, but you know, I try. Um, it doesn't always work out, but I can't function without it. So definitely like organizational content, I reckon. <laughs> The next question is, what washing powder did you use to wash your brushes? So yesterday on Instagram, I tried washing my brushes with a washing powder and it worked so well. I don't actually have a box of it here, but let me put a picture on the screen right now. And it just worked so well. Like even for foundation brushes, like any brushes that I use with cream products, I find them really difficult to wash and get all of the product out. But the washing powder just like cut through like nothing else. That is how I'm going to be washing my brushes from now on. Rena and Emma asks, do you have any future goals or plans for your channel? Not particularly. <laughs> I really would like to upload more, but as I said before, I just find it difficult. Like I have all this content that I want to create and share with you and makeup that I want to talk about. And so I guess my goal would be to upload more, but at the moment I'm just doing the best that I can. I'm really excited that I am getting closer to 10k subscribers though. I feel like I'll be like a legit YouTuber when I have 10,000 subscribers. Not that I don't appreciate all of you right now, but it's a nice little brag, you know. Oh, how many subscribers do you have? Oh, 10,000. And I know that's like small in the YouTube world, but it makes me happy. <laughs> Emma says, when is the house tour coming? So. I haven't done a full house tour yet because the house just isn't complete. First of all, I had an 18 week wait for our lounge. That has finally arrived. We had like a 12 week wait for the bed. That's finally here. Just ordered some bedside tables. They're gonna take four weeks. It has been a very slow process getting bits and pieces for the house. And again, with just work and life and everything else I try to juggle, I do things Slowly, I do little bits and pieces at a time. <laughs> I did just upload a new vlog though. It's like a clean and organized with me, but I show you all the new stuff that I bought for the house. So you'll see the lounge, the bed hadn't got here yet, but I got like a rug for the dining area. Just a few little bits and pieces. I've got a nice mirror on the wall behind me here. And then you wanna see more about the house. I do have two building vlogs that I can link down below as well. But yeah, I think once I get a few more things set up, I'll do a house tour then. Like right beside me, I've got a pile of photo frames that I wanna put on the wall with wedding photos. Um, our spare bedroom, I haven't even set up the bed yet. Like the mattress is still on the ground. <laughs> So I will probably have one coming in the future. It just might be a while until I get everything set up and I'm happy with how it looks. Clarissa asks, how did you and Clinton meet and what made you study YouTube? So I answered that one before, but Clinton and I met in high school. Um, so we went to the same high school. We weren't in the same group, but <laughs> we got to know each other because we kissed at a party. <laughs> and so that led to us hanging out more and more. And then I really started to develop feelings for him. And he even <laughs> talked about this in his wedding speech, but I asked him out. And when I did, he responded with, yeah, but don't tell anyone just yet. <laughs> and like, now that I think about it, how rude. <laughs> but at the time, I was just like, he said yes, and I was so excited. And look, we can laugh about it now. As I said, he mentioned it in his wedding speech, and it was just so funny. <laughs> I was really ratty back then, though, so I can kind of understand if he was a little bit embarrassed of me. It's like, he liked me, but he was like, oh, you're a little bit... Mm. <laughs> but look, we just celebrated 14 years together and our one-year wedding anniversary, so... It worked out in the end, didn't it? <laughs> Cold Case Edits asked another question. What's your biggest achievement in life? And kind of just rolling off of my last answer, I think my biggest achievement is being in this relationship with Clinton. 
I am just so unbelievably proud of us. Like to get together when we were 17 and to just grow up together, you know, turn into adults together. I just, it blows my mind how long we've been together and I am just so proud of our relationship. I feel like we've built a very comfortable life together. We support each other through anything that arises and I just, yeah, I'm really proud of that. Simone asks, is life different after marriage relationship wise? I like, not really. The, we've discussed this and the thing that we love the most that has changed is that we can call each other our husband and wife. So like, I remember when we went on our honeymoon, my car shit itself and we had to like go into Repco, how romantic. And we went in and he was like, oh, my wife's car, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, that's me. I'm the wife. But yeah, I think we really enjoy calling each other our husband and wife. That's really fun. <laughs> but like we've been together for so long. For us, I think it's just the importance of working on your relationship. So, you know, we did that before we were married, but now that we're married, like it's a high priority to spend quality time together, go on dates and actually be with each other. Like just cause you're married, it doesn't mean you can just stop working on the relationship. Like relationships can be hard sometimes and they do require effort, like any relationship, a friendship, a relationship with a family member, they all require effort. And it's just really important for us, especially now that we are married, to make sure we put in that effort with our relationship. This question made me laugh, it's from Teresa. She said, first of all, how are you? Good, thank you. <laughs> um, I'm, planning in, I'm planning on moving in with my boyfriend. Do you have any tips? What is your least favorite thing about living with your husband? If this is a personal question, I'm truly sorry. I think it's funny. <laughs> um, moving in with your boyfriend. So I think like it's a huge learning curve. Just living with someone new, you have to get used to how each other work and just how they live and how they function. Like it's going to bring up some challenges. Um, but I just think communication is key in all aspects. Communication is key. I also think it's a really good idea to have a routine or just something in place when it comes to sharing the load of house duties. You know, in society, it does fall on the woman and I am just not here for that. <laughs> like, I see it as this is our house. We both work full time. It's both our responsibility to look after our home. Like, why should it just fall on one person? So even when we moved into this house, we created a new cleaning routine every week, just like a few jobs that we get done. And then every fortnight, a bit of a deeper clean. And for us, that works really well because I feel like the load is being shared. It's not just falling upon me to take care of everything. And you know, I communicate this with Clinton a lot. And I think when we first moved in together, I kind of took on that womanly role of doing it all. And it got to a point where I was like, mm. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I would just say from the beginning, be very open about the load of looking after a house because living together is so fun. Like Clinton and I are just the biggest idiots. And our poor neighbors must think we're crazy, but it's just so fun living together. And it's a really good time. Like you really get to know each other on a deeper level, I feel. So I'm really excited for you. And then the least favorite thing about living with your husband. Hmm. Okay, this. How come every time, right, the bathroom gets cleaned? He has to shave that night. Like you couldn't have shaved last night. You have to shave every time the bathroom gets cleaned. Hair everywhere. It's not just on the basin. It ends up on the floor. It just, it just ends up everywhere. That is probably the most annoying thing. Just little 
hair, bits everywhere. Drives me insane. And then he's like, I'll clean it up, I'll clean it up. It's not clean. <laughs> Have you seen that episode of Friends where um, Monica's like, it's mo it needs to be Monica clean. Or she says something about being Monica clean. I'm like that. It needs to be Tamika clean, okay? Clean up your hairs. And then the last question I'm going to answer today, and I don't really want it to come across like negatively, but the question is, will there be any babies in the future or soonish? And then maybe please have a house to us. So just regarding the babies, I have said this before. Clinton and I would like to have a family one day. We haven't tried to have a family, but this is a very personal and sensitive topic. It wasn't until I got older that I realized how inappropriate questions relating to pregnancy are. And unfortunately, I didn't realize until I saw people in my life struggle with fertility. You just don't know what someone else is going through. There could be a variety of things going on with someone's fertility journey. And these kind of questions just come off a little insensitive and it may trigger that person. So as I said, Clinton and I would like to have a family one day. I'm not going to speak about it or answer any more questions. If I'm pregnant, you'll find out when I tell you and that's how it should be. Even recently, <laughs> I told this story on Instagram, but recently at work, I had a doctor come up to me and ask me if I was pregnant. Now I do think she was trying to be a bit malicious. <sighs> that's another, part of the story, but she flat out bent down and said to me, are you pregnant? I looked her in the eyes and I was like, no, and that's really rude. And she was kind of not really taken back because I think she was trying to be rude. Um, and then I just gave her a little spiel about why you shouldn't ask that question. Like, first of all, this woman couldn't even tell me my name, but she wants to ask me that. Like, it's just, it's just not an appropriate question because you don't know what that person's been through. And I'm going to leave it at that, but just please remember that. And next time you even think of asking anyone a pregnancy related question, just don't. <laughs> all right. Well, the sun is going down. I am losing my light. Thank you all so much for your questions. I hope that you enjoyed watching and got to know me a little bit better. I don't know. It was just fun. <laughs> If you aren't already, come and follow me over on Instagram. And if you want to see any of those house related videos, I will have them linked in the description box. All right. Well, I hope you're all having a fabulous day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.